Yo, what is up everyone? Tachi here. So today we're going to be talking about the absolute basics in terms of what you are looking for when you want to build your grid out. As you guys are aware, I have talked about it in terms of what skill you want as a DPS main. You guys are familiar. The skill that you want as a DPS main is actually called Dauntless Courage. Like you see here, the skill Dauntless Courage has a chance to slightly increase your attack damage when attacking, right? Big thanks to Casual for letting me know that uh, actually apparently all of these uh, Coliseum support skills, yeah, uh, if you have your grid filled with them, it's not just a weapon that you're using that has a chance to proc. It's every weapon in your grid, right? So basically, if your grid is filled with 20 uh, Dauntless Courages, you could technically get like 5, 10, even 20 technically um, stacks of it in one attack. It's a possibility, right? So I originally believed that only the weapon that you're actually using has a chance of proccing but no it's actually any weapon in your grid and it only applies to yourself so don't be confused uh, having dauntless courage in your grid does not mean that your ally can trigger your dauntless courage it's not how that works it's only your grid right so this is the only support skill that a dps main wants it doesn't matter whether you're using bows or you're using lances or you're using swords or axes it doesn't matter all you want is dauntless courage that's the only important part if it has dauntless courage especially if it's dauntless courage too which this is not uh, it has a longer longevity now of course in the example of the axe which someone brought up uh, not only in the last video but in the one before that 2b's axe has very low physical attack but it is dauntless courage too now i will address that while it's true that that is a bad thing, obviously if she had 2000 physical attack as a physical weapon, that would be ideal. However, it is like more like 1200 something, right? So it's not good. But even if you had a full grid of Dauntless Courage, the first weapons you would be getting rid of are weapons with Dauntless Courage 1 or low tier weapons. Like for example, I have a couple weapons in my grid now that are Dauntless Courage 1 but they're S rank base. So I would get rid of those before I get rid of 2B's axe, right? There's a priority to it. Yes, in the long term, you're gonna get rid of it because of its stats. The stats suck. That's one of the main reasons why you would get rid of it. But you have like a bunch of other weapons that you would prioritize getting rid of before that. That's why I think the weapon is actually not as bad as people make it seem. It's not amazing, but Dauntless, it's not good, it's not amazing, but the Dauntless Courage will make it last quite a long time for us global players. I'm going to say at least a couple months, you know, not, not like the next month we're going to replace it. Because we would need 20 weapons with Dauntless Courage that are physical weapons to fill out our grid. Like, what are the chances of you having that? It's very unlikely that we are going to have that like right, like next second, you know what I mean? That's why I think it's a good weapon, even though it has low stats. And then obviously the other thing that can get power creeped are the actual main weapons, right? The main weapon attack. So as you see here, this is a tier three. That's the important part, but not only that, but there are some weapons in the future. I'm sure there's probably some examples in global where it'll not only deal damage, but it also has a chance to, uh, a chance or even like the flat 100% ability to do something else, like uh, lower the enemy's defense and attack or whatever. That is also another form of power creep in this game. And then again, another form of power creep would just be in terms of like base stats, right? So if now weapons uh, like axes have like 2200 attack, there are, might be some weapons in the future that have DC and also have 2500 attack. So that's just a very clear power creep there in terms of total stats uh, with the same abilities. So now that we've discussed that, let's go into the other jobs and what they want uh, for their weapons. When it comes to clerics, um, generally speaking, they want both recovery support and replenish mana. Now, I, I know the names have changed a little bit compared to JP, but recovery support is the one that uh, gives you a chance to recover a slight amount of HP, right? And then replenish mana is the one that will decrease the cost of that, that weapon, right? The split is about... 17 to 3 so you want about 15 plus recovery support weapons and then five or less replenished mana weapons 
I've heard that the split is more typically around 17 to 3, but that does depend player to player. Now, that being said, when it comes to healing, weapons that deal AoE heal are better. I don't know why I said deal, but yeah, they are better. That's why even, even though the weapon that's on the near banner, the healing weapon, is good, it's going to get power creeped by Popola, which is in the replicant banner. So when it comes to Popola and the reason why it's going to be power creeped is because not only does it heal two targets, but it also will 100% chance increase their defense by a small amount and it also has recovery support too. So that's why that weapon is a, a form of power creep. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean that Emil's weapon is going to be useless like tomorrow or next week. That weapon will last you a long time. We're talking a very good period of time even though it is a single target heal and uh, multi-target are better that's just how that works right it obviously depends entirely on their release schedule um like whether they continue this one week banner thing or they they start going to two weeks like how it is in jp that's fully up to them we have no clue so now let's talk about minstrels and sorcerers this one's even easier to talk about they really only want one skill. So the only skill that minstrels and sorcerers want in their grid is support boon. Preferably support boon too, but you get what you can for now. And the same applies when it comes to buffing. AoE buffs are slightly better. You only want support boon weapons. So keep that in mind when you are prioritizing weapons to get or, or weapons that you want to pull for. If it does not have any of these skills that I'm saying right now, that means that the weapon is inherently not going to be that good. Uh, it's not going to last as long as it could. Um, so if you see a sword with good stats, but it doesn't have Dauntless Courage, it's not worth getting. Maybe if you spend money, even a little bit, or if you just want to have a little bit of a power boost now, it could be worth pulling for those weapons if it, if it will help you clear content, right? I did say this when the game came out that... It wasn't suggested to pull on the Alice banner, but if you got stuck, it would be okay to pull. I still follow that guideline. While it's nice to wait around for more weapons with the sub skill that you want, it's going to make it harder for you to clear content and actually continue to progress in the game. I don't think it's necessarily worth waiting for it. After the initial grind of this game, I do think that it's more of a side game kind of thing because you don't really need to play 24 seven in my case, even right. I just need to do my grinding, uh, which doesn't take very long, and then I leave for the day and I wait for my Purify to come back up, which it's up right now, but I'll do that after. Yes, I understand that saving is technically more optimal, but in terms of like the play state, it just doesn't really make much sense to stop doing an event long term because, well, you don't have enough power, but you could pull on this banner, which the sword might last, say, three months. It might last you three months, but it's not going to last you six. So you should just keep saving. Just keep saving until the next DC banner. I don't know. Personally, that's just my thought. I think it's fine to spend a little bit here and there. If you, you know, you really want uh, a boost because you need it. Now, that's the key word. You must need it for it to be worth it. In that same avenue, I don't think it's worth pulling on banners that don't actually make you and your role uh, function more efficiently so in my case as a dps main it's not worth spending on the little mermaid banner yes i know that i spent on the little mermaid banner don't tell me but Todd, you didn't you summon yes i did but i summoned because i had an itch and because i spend money that's why it's not something that you should do as they say do as i say not as i do I don't do everything right. I might give advice, but that doesn't mean I'm going to follow it. I know I should set an example, but I spend money to not have to. Basically is how that works. That's, that's just what it is, guys. You know, if you guys spend money, you don't have to follow the advice to a T either. But if you're free to play, just know that saving long term for weapons that are going to last you long term is more efficient. But anyways... That is the end of this basic guide. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more guides, or even if you guys have things that you want me to answer a question, feel free to let me know in the comments. Really, I don't have that many ideas for things to make videos on. So feel free to just shove questions at me. I'll make videos on them. Anyhow, I'm out. Have a nice day.